Hi friends, good evening. Welcome to my channel, Temples of Jesus. If you like this video, please subscribe, like, share, comment. Um, I guess I'll do like an intro. I love to see the temple. I'm going there someday to feel the Holy Spirit, to whisper and to pray. For the temple is the house of God, a place of love and beauty. I'll prepare myself while I am young. 440, this is my sacred duty. Okay, so this is where we're at. It's kind of late, and I made poor decisions with caffeine today. Not poor decisions like I can't. Be worthy to go to the temple tomorrow for my shift but poor decisions like i'm gonna need to figure out some unisom or something tonight um and i really thought that with all my ideas and notes and and sources and all my videos last week that i had my steak conference talk in the bag <laughs> and that somehow magically it was going to take two hours to write and I'm not going to even say the amount of hours that I've spent today. So, um, also, yes, Linda, I'm sorry that with the background that things disappear, but I do have my earrings, my braid, my shoulders, like things are attached, but sometimes with the background, which I need right now, um, the things kind of disappear in and out. So, uh, but such a pretty background, right? Okay. Let me go to my notes really quick. Oh, is that recording? No, that's only if I share screen, right? Okay, I think. Uh, okay, so I have 13 minutes and I have promised the executive secretary, state secretary, I'll just call him Brother D, who I've been giving a hard time lately, even though he doesn't, we don't know each other. <laughs> oh going to be funny if they call me like tomorrow and be like just kidding we're not going to have you speak um it looks like 125 to 150 words are about one minute of speaking <clears throat> and sometimes I like to emphasize or take pauses for like effect <laughs> like dramatic effect <laughs> when I'm talking um so we are looking at 1,625 to 1,950 words are about 13 minutes. So I'm definitely thinking like 1,600 words. And I wanted to do like a section about he paints for us to be near him from Psalms with all this beautiful stuff. And then go into just like 35% of the time is a little bit about my conversion, which... Maybe this will all still work out, but this is my first shot at it. I think it's just cathartic, like writing it down too, even though I have my article and I did a bunch of writing about one year ago um, of my story. Uh, I think I just need to like, it feels good to like write it down and get it all out again. Um, all the traumas, not the conversion, because I'm not even really yet to the conversion part. And so, okay, y'all. Um, I don't know why I keep saying y'all. I don't usually say that. So he paints for us to be near him from Psalms. And then I was going to have a, the like talk, talk a little bit about my conversion. But then I didn't want the whole talk to be about my conversion because I want it to be like applicable for other people about God's loving kindness and um, the covenant path and like the calls to women for the like covenant women and just like these different things that are more applicable for people to hear that are takeaways for them. And so I was wanting to do my conversion story as part of the topic of conversion for maybe like 40, 50% of the time. Now, this is where I'm at, everybody. So we're looking 1625 to 1950 words are about 13 minutes. And I honestly think I need to be over that. I'm not done yet with the conversion part and I've already spent a couple of hours cutting it way down and clarifying it. 
I'm at 2,238 words. So what I'm going to do right now, and I wasn't going to do a video, but I was actually going to go ahead and read what I have so far to see how fast I could do it. I don't want to speed through it, so I'll probably just talk naturally and we'll see what the damage is. Here, let me start my timer on my phone. Who texted me? Okay. I'll go to timer. No, stopwatch. That's what I want. Okay. So I'm just going to read. I've not done a read through out loud. You've possibly, if you've watched my videos, you've heard pieces of this before. And when I do have my total finalized, correct 13 minute product in several days or on Sunday after I give my talk, I'm definitely going to give it to you all on a video. The 13 minute version. So honestly, this is just a rough draft and I was going to do it anyways. And I thought, let me just record it and it could be my video for the day. <laughs> and we are going to get to the Book of Mormon. I absolutely want to read and get through the Book of Mormon through this year. And I think it's just, I got to get through this talk, y'all, or you guys. So, um, okay, here we go. <sighs> Good evening, friends. At 41 years old, this is my first church talk since being a teenager. My name is Mindy McGook. My name is Mindelin French, and I'm the matriarch of the French family in the Zududu ward. My husband, Jason, and I have been married 10 years and have three gorgeous, loving children. Gavin Brielle, uh, I'll do that. I'm privileged and grateful to speak with you all today on the topic of my recent and unshakable conversion of fire back to the gospel of Jesus Christ. I humbly request the Holy Ghost to be present here today so that some of you may be touched and moved to action to increase your efforts to be immovable on the covenant path, reaching ever harder to our God and Jesus Christ. I was born in the covenant to loving parents with three older siblings who caused much contention in our home. Having a robust testi testimony myself through my young life, at age 18, I said yes to a double date, understanding the boy to be a member of our faith. He was not. 21 years later, I'm grateful I said yes so far. After that double date in 2001, I painfully and forcefully worked myself away from church activity over the next few months. Two years now in my 18-year religious dormancy, I was unexpectedly pregnant. After I firmly dismissed counsel to abort what I knew to be an undeniable child of God, my unplanned pregnancy quickly turned into a planned adoption through family services. We placed DJ with a mature and faithful, loving couple wanting to start their own family 10 years after being married. Dave and Stacy were unable to have a family without help from those such as I, those who have the greatest love within our own circumstance, who in charity with the pure love of Christ, choose to place a beloved baby with a family ready to raise a child of God, to choose the best opportunity for success of that child, for that child, for success of that child in the long game. Placing DJ for adoption is one of the greatest decisions I have ever made. I felt this way about my decision at that time, not knowing who he would become later. And then at, like, at the end, I'm going to talk about, you know, his accomplishments. I felt this way about my decision at that time. Oh, sorry. Not knowing who he would become later. Not knowing that DJ was, but knowing that DJ was born meant to be in that eternal family. I am forever grateful for my stewardship assignment Heavenly Father trusted me with to fulfill in that season of my life. I enjoy the countless blessings that have come from being a birth mother. In 2012, my husband, Jason, and I were married nine years later. Both of us were educated with careers, homes, and immediate plans for a family. Currently, we have our mentioned three growing children who we are regularly astonished with and that God could have faith in us with such obviously strong, kind, and talented spirits. In mid-2018, I felt a desire for my newborn to receive her baby blessing at, at church. Up to this point, we had not attended church in our six-year marriage. I bought the beautiful dress, made the arrangements, and took all three of our little children to be blessed that September Sabbath day. Later that same year in 2018, I started to hear a call, a thought recurring in my mind, Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. I would just walk around my house at times and say to my non-denominational husband, babe, 
I know I may sound crazy, but I'm telling you, Jesus is coming back. That was the kickstart to my long, painful, yet rewarding, and now firm two and a half year conversion process, a process which culminated in conversion of baptism by fire. The baptism by fire took me to a belief that God is eternal my eternal father and creator, Jesus Christ is my healer and savior and understanding of the Holy ghost, the truthfulness of the scriptures and a sure Testament that our living prophet is the mouthpiece for Jesus's living church. Now today, my conversion thus far has led me with my precious family directly onto the covenant path. After the children's blessings and in hearing this call of Jesus is coming back, Jason and I agreed to take small baby steps with incremental goals towards Jesus. The most obvious way was to go was to get to church, and the most obvious church for us in this busy time in life was the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We attended Christmas service that year. Our neighborhood was being reorganized into a brand new ward starting right then in January 2019. We had set a goal to attend church once a month as a family through 2019. No plans past that. Our goal for 2019 had nothing to do with changes in the way we were living daily life, but simply to attend church one time each month. Our family attended the new ward that first January Sabbath of 2019. The new ward uh, seemed sp suspiciously like ideal timing. That first Sunday was strange yet familiar as I was somewhat on guard for culture struggles and unfounded guilt I had recalled growing up. But it also felt good to already be keeping our family goal, and I always feel the spirit through hymns no matter what is going on in my life. Funny enough, that first Sunday, I had the audacity to walk up during testimony service, my heart beating, sitting by the bishopric to lean over and whisper if it was okay to say something about prayer and that I wasn't active. I went up, introduced myself to the congregation, um, shared that I was not an active saint, and said a few words on prayer and my belief that God answers our prayers. I didn't even end in the name of Jesus Christ, just went and sat down. That's it. No other actions were taken in 2019 besides attending once a month, often towards the last Sunday of each month, and occasionally hungover. At the start of 2020, we felt good about going to church. We increased our goal to attend as a family twice each month. We were keeping that goal through the start of 2020 until March came and church was no more for a time. Okay, so I'm going to um, pause. Oh. Does it let me go again? I'm going to pause here because um, maybe you guys can give me feedback. <laughs> I, uh, I need to practice and sound more natural. <clears throat> I like where it's going so far, but I'm still happy for feedback for the part that I've read so far. So this is where I think I'm probably going wrong, and it's more like cathartic, and I've been stuck on these bullets for hours. Oh, I don't want to drink that water right now. <clears throat> okay, that was, so that was six minutes, and I have 13, and I haven't even, like, that's kind of introduction. I haven't even started. <sighs> okay, I'm going to write the whole thing, and then just, like, super scrap it, and go with the spirit, and just put in the important parts. People don't need to know the details. They need to feel the spirit, and, like, the spirit will touch them. I just have to trust that. So this is the part where I think I'm kind of going wrong and I need to condense this to like maybe 90 seconds. And I know this part will be another, it's going to be another whole six minutes, which is going to take us to 12 minutes. And I haven't even talked about my actual conversion yet. Dang. Okay. So boohoo, poor me. I like list off, which is probably just not healthy for anybody to, I'd like to pivot focus now to life events taking place over the past five years to help set the stage of sharing my fuller conversion experience. Okay, so, and then that's the end of what I have so far. So I'll let you know what the time was after we're totally done. And then y'all just let, oh, can I stop saying that? And then please let me know in comments because we have to get to 13 minutes. Like this section, Mindy, is interesting and great, but you don't, like, everybody's gone through major traumas during the last few years, legit, and not everybody needs to know, like, the specifics of yours, 
So just share five of them, but without any details, like just really, really big picture, like literally one sentence with listing off five and no details. And then I can have time for the prophet and the scriptures and like other things that are much more important. Okay, sorry, I just had to talk that out for a minute. Okay, I hope this keeps continuing. Six minutes, five seconds in case the timer doesn't. Okay. <clears throat> I'd like to pivot focus now to life events taking place over the past five years to help set the stage of sharing my fuller conversion experience. 2017 was the start of seemingly unending traumas. A trusted non-member caregiver started mistreating our toddlers. We took immediate action and the kids were okay, but the damage Jason and I felt was horrific. I had also been experiencing chronic infections from 2015 through 2017, spending much time with specialists and on antibiotics. 2018, our youngest daughter was born, a baby who our son had sweetly called down from heaven. She came too soon and too small due to my health. She was failing to thrive those first weeks. After my desperate attempts, her nursing improved and she gained strength. Later that year, my mom started having severe back pain being limited to our bed. Due to my irrational fear, anxieties, and some PTSD from my own spinal surgeries, scared that I would have a similar painful fate, I started using a daily substance to cope, be productive at work, and look forward to something each day. In this same time, just days back to work from maternity leave, I got a call my brother-in-law was missing. His struggle with alcoholism was worsening. 2019, my mom's pain had a reason, lupus and cancer. The multiple myeloma had broken her vertebrae requiring major surgery. I started traveling to Idaho once a quarter to support my parents. With increasingly amplified life stressors, my chronic postpartum infections continued. I was heartbroken that, to preserve my own health and stick around for my family, I had to end my time in nursing my last sweet baby girl before she or I were even close to being ready. Just after my mom's cancer diagnosis, Jason's mom received her also delayed cancer diagnosis. All in a whirlwind, my husband found himself for a week alone with her in the hospital, watching her slowly suffocate to death. This was months before COVID, and Jason is grateful to have had that time with her before the pandemic and sees it as a tender mercy from God. Due to the stress from her death and the other traumas we faced, our family's health and immune systems were shot. In just four months' time at the end of 2019, I had four colds and three bouts of norovirus, aka the stomach flu. Each of my other family members had similar amounts of illness in this time, with my husband being close to pneumonia twice and requiring breathing treatments. We said goodbye to 2019 as the year of sickness. Like really, I had an Instagram post about it. And I was surely confident that 2020 was the new fresh start we needed to move forward in health. 2020, COVID came. The employer Jason was loyal to for 17 years purposely eliminated his position. My mental health started to decline with us all being home, not knowing what to expect next. During this time in 2020, I started to have months at a time of sobriety. Then I would drink for a couple months at a time. This is the Saturday night adult session. As I was lightly becoming more acquainted with the idea of the gospel, I was also wrestling with the idea of needing to stop drinking. The more I thought about becoming lifelong sober, the harder it became. The thought of never drinking again on vacation or date night or holidays or weekends or fill in the blank truly made me feel like there was nothing to look forward to in life. Nothing, really, that's how I felt. Substance abuse was increasingly worse for me and drinking became a maladaptive behavior. I was trying to fill healthy needs with unhealthy behaviors. I was reaching for an outlet and escape. Uh, this can't happen when I'm in my talk, so we're gonna have to figure that out. it is. A reward for my, I did it again. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm just going to highlight it and we're, it's late and I'm tired. Okay. Ugh, we're almost at 10 minutes guys. A reward for my strength through these times, a coping mechanism and a distraction. Jason, I dare say was in a very similar boat as I was. In the fall, we of course were still in quarantine. I was more settled now with working full-time from home, sole breadwinner, breadwinner and sober again for a time. 
We had not heard from my brother-in-law, Sean, since the previous weekend during an unusually positive and connecting time with him during a Zoom birthday party, the new norm. My husband came into my office that Friday morning with a look on his face and I stood up to hug him. He's gone. After two years in and out of hospitals and dozens of well checks later, this morning's well check was the one, the one we'd been preparing ourselves for for some time. Tragically, my father-in-law was the unlucky one for the check that day to discover one of his two sons five days after he died. Just one calendar year after Jason's mom passed, his only blood brother was now gone too. No funeral or closure during that early time in the pandemic, no hugs with other family members, little comfort, just massive guilt, shame, and self-blame for each of us still alive who'd been in Sean's close inner circle. And that's legit, everyone. The self-imposed guilt of Sean's death was too heavy. Just a week after October General Conference, I spent the next eight weeks in the heaviest binge yet. It took all my strength, and I decided to stop drinking for good Thanksgiving of 2020. Weeks after Sean's death, Jason insisted he was feeling unwell. We thought his complaints were unprocessed grief from the death's layoff and pandemic. Over the next six months, he pushed for doctor's visits and answers. They all told him he was fine. He had two biopsies conducted. They said he was fine. They were nodules on his thyroid, and they agreed to have a partial thyroidectomy um, because it was feeling like Jason was being strangled. So two weeks after Jason's baptism, he had surgery. The weekend after his surgery, while I was taking my oldest daughter to her virtual kindergarten graduation bag pickup, we received an email that Jason had cancer, unable to speak with the doctor or any medical professional for four more days. I dove into crisis care, research gear, and fix it mode yet again. Over the next days on and off, Jason was, over the next 12 days, I don't know where that went. Oh my gosh, Mindy, don't edit in the middle of this. You're like videoing the next. Do we have to get that specific? No. Okay. Over the next 12 days on and off, Jason was off to the ER lab testing different doctors in urgent care. Jason is our children's primary care caregiver, and I don't even know how to care for all three on my own. So sad, right? I was alone in a pandemic with zero people allowed in the home, no husband, trying to work full time with three young children in tow. Even though I was now on what I thought the right path was spiritually, praying, savoring general conference, praising God and Jesus, teaching my children about the gospel and watching weekly church, I was not yet baptized by fire. (sighs) Okay. I may or may not have emailed the stake president a couple hours ago saying, can I please have 20 minutes and please don't tell Brother D, the secretary, because he'll like kill me. And then I told him I would absolutely stay within the constraints of my assignment, but it doesn't hurt to ask, right? So that was 12 minutes, 40 seconds, and I was going pretty fast. So I just have to scrap so much stuff because I have really good stuff, guys. I've got the chesed and the loving kindness. If you've listened to any of my other videos, like there's really beautiful, helpful, strong, powerful, impactful things. Pray for me. (laughs) I really wanted to have this done last Saturday night. Um, and then I was certain I'd have it done today. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to have to keep working on it um, tomorrow and Wednesday. Hopefully I can truly have it completely done by Wednesday night and then make refinements on Thursday and Friday. I hope you all have a blessed night. Stay strong. Let's get on, the, get on and stay on the covenant path. Thank you for the kind comments. Um, thank you for those who checked out my article. I am still going to be reading my article. It's one of our videos. Um, I'm nervous to do an out, an out, what's it called? Intro, outro, an outro song, because if I totally screw up this song, I feel like my whole video will be messed up and I don't do editing. Okay. Follow the prophet, follow the prophet, follow the prophet, don't go astray like me. Follow the prophet, follow the prophet, follow the prophet. All right.
Good night, guys. Love you. Take care. Where's my button? I wasn't doing any screen sharing at all during that, right? Okay, so I don't need to stop screen share. I just need to stop recording. Bye.